my friends so now we're gonna talk about the triggers in SQL so as usual first we're gonna learn what is exactly triggers in SQL and why and when we need those triggers and then we're gonna have a very simple use case in order to understand how to create triggers in SQL so let's start with the first question what is SQL triggers Alright, so previously we have understood that we can put all our SQL statements in one stored procedure and you have to go and manually execute the stored procedure. So that means in order to trigger the stored procedure, you have manually to execute it. And this is of course a problem. How about to do that automatically? So triggers in SQL, they are special stored procedure that automatically runs or let's say fired in response to a specific event that happens on a table. So what this exactly means. So now let's say that we have a table in our database and now something could happen to this table like inserting data, deleting, updating data, all those stuff that is happening we call them events. And now what we can do we can go and attach like a trigger on top of this table and each time an event happened like insert update delete something else gonna be triggered like maybe going and inserting data somewhere else in another table or doing a check whether we are allowed to delete the data in the first place or maybe sending a warning message or something so based on any changes to the table we can trigger another event and we can do that using the SQL triggers. And for the SQL triggers, we have like multiple types, like the DML triggers. And this type of trigger gonna respond once we have like insert, update, delete statements. Another type of triggers, we have the DDL triggers. Like you can make a trigger to respond to any schema changes, like creating, altering, or dropping a table, or even a view, by the way, not only tables. And the third type of triggers, we have the login trigger. So the trigger can respond to a login event. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna focus on the DML triggers, the insert, update, delete. And for the DML triggers, we have two types. We have after triggers, and as well we have instead of triggers. So as the name suggests, if you use after, so it's gonna be executed after the event. And the other type, the instead of, it's something that cannot wait until everything happens. So this time the trigger can be executed during the event, not after it. So now in order to understand all of this, we can have a really nice use case. And now the use case is about maintaining and audit logs. So what we mean with that? Let's have for example the table employees. The employee data are usually very sensitive informations because there we can see which employees are added, the salary updates, the employee terminations. And this makes the table very important because we would like to track all those changes that is happening to this table. So each time we are inserting, updating, deleting, we would like to maintain a log about all those changes in order to analyze it later. It is of course very important such a logs for the compliance and the auditors. And in case there is like a problem, we can go to the logs to understand when this happened, who made the changes and what exactly changed. And now in order to maintain logs, we're gonna use the power of triggers. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and attach like a trigger on the table employees. And each time we insert new data to the employees, we are triggering another event. So what can happen, this new employee gonna be inserted in the audit logs in order to have a record about this activity in the logs. So that means each time you are inserting data to the table employees, you are automatically inserting data inside the logs. And this is really amazing use case for the triggers. So let's go and implement it. Okay, so now let's check quickly the syntax of the triggers. So we start with the usuals, create trigger, then the trigger name. And then we have to specify on which table this trigger can be built in. So now we are attaching like a trigger on top of a one table. And after that, we have to define for the SQL when this trigger gonna happen. So what is actually triggering the trigger? And here you can define after or instead, then you have to define the operator. So first you have to define like after or instead of, and then we have to define the operation. So insert, update, delete, or one of them. And with that, you are telling SQL when exactly this should happen. And now after that, we have to tell SQL what gonna happen if the trigger is triggered. 
So here we have like begin and end, and then we have like several skill statements that's gonna describe what can happen once we have the trigger. So that's it. As you can see, the syntax is very simple. Okay, so now let's do it step by step. First, I would like to create a table where we can store the logs information. So it's gonna be very simple table. We're gonna say create table, then we're gonna call it sales employee logs and we're gonna have the following columns inside it so let's start with the primary key it's gonna be the log id and the data type int and then we're gonna have like a sequence so we're gonna have identity and this is the primary key let's go to the next one it's gonna be the employee id and the data type gonna be int the next one is gonna be the log message so let's have it as a var char and i'm gonna have it like 255 and then to the next one we're gonna have the log dates and then we're gonna have like let's say a date or a date time so that's it let's go and execute it and with that we have a new table inside our database now the next step is that we're gonna go and create our trigger so we're gonna say create trigger and i'm gonna call it like this trg this is just a prefix to indicate this is a trigger and i'm just gonna call it after insert employee and now we have to define the table so it's gonna be on sales employee so now with that we are saying we have now a trigger on the table employees and now we have to define the logic so we're going to use after insert so that means after we insert any record to the table employees the following things should happen so we're going to say as and then begin and end and in between we can have our logic so what can happen after a new record is inserted to the employees we're going to go and insert a new record to the employee logs so we're going to have insert into sales employee logs and we're going to have here the three columns employee id the log message and the log dates so now which value is going to be inserted it's going to be like from a query so we're going to say select and we're going to say as well employee id and for the log message we can have customized one like let's say a new employee added and it's going to be equal to the employee id so in order to have the employee id it's going to be like this so that's it now to the next one we need the log date it's going to be get date and now you might say okay but where this employee id is coming from well it's going to come from the table from inserted so what is actually inserted? It is like special virtual table that holds all the new inserted data to our table employees. So anything we are inserting inside the employees will be available inside this table. And of course, this is only available during the execution of this trigger. So you cannot go now outside of this query and start querying the table inserted because you will not find anything. This is only like a virtual table that contains anything that we are doing to the table employees. And you find a lot of information like the salary, the age and so on. So that's it for the inserted. Now we have to make sure that in our message we have everything as a string because the employee ID is an integer. So we have to cast it. So cast and then we're going to say as var char like this. Otherwise we'll get an error. So I think we have our trigger ready. We have a new trigger on the table employees. And now the first question is when this trigger can happen? Well, it can happen after inserting data to the employees and then the second question what's gonna happen well once we have this event the whole thing here gonna be executed where we are saying insert to the logs the employee id the message and as well the date when this happens and we can get all those informations from the table the virtual table inserted so i think we are ready let's go and execute it and now if you go to the object explorer to our database let's go to our table employees and then to the triggers so if you refresh over here you can see our new trigger that we just created so with that we have defined our trigger and we are ready now the next step is that we're gonna go and trigger our trigger so let's go and do that let's have a new query but first i'm gonna have a look to our logs so sales employee logs so let's query this one and as you can see our logs is empty because we didn't insert anything to the table employees let's go and do that let's trigger our trigger so what we're gonna do we're gonna say insert into sales employees and we're gonna have the following values so we are at the counter i think six let's have the first name maria the last name 
and then we can have the position it's gonna be the HR for example the birth date let's pick something I don't know we have a female here and the salary let's go and get this salary and the hierarchy it can be for example three so let's go and execute it and with that as you can see we have inserted the new data to the employees let's check now the logs so let's query it so we have here a nice log about the employee number six and we have a nice message and when this did happen of course you can go and insert another employee let's say seven with the same data so let's do that and check the logs and with that we have another log for the new employee so this is really amazing use case in order to maintain a log to your data and you can go and make like some analysis on how many insert did happens and of course not only on the inserts you can have it on the update delete so as you can see it is very simple this is how we create the triggers in sql all right friends so that's all about the triggers in sql and how to automate the events Next, I'm going to show you how to work with AI and ChatGPT in order to assist you in your journey in SQL. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm going to really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all those stuff going to help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content going to reach the others. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.